In this video, we will discuss systolic murmurs. So, what's a heart murmur? A heart murmur is an abnormal sound produced in the heart, which is longer in duration than the opening snap, ejection, click, and mid-systolic click. A murmur may be systolic or diastolic, or according to the shape, it may be crescendo, where there is progressive increase in blood volume passing through the defect. Decrescendo, where there is progressive decrease in blood volume passing through the defect, or it may be a combined crescendo and decrescendo or a diamond shaped murmur or a plateau with the same intensity. So let's discuss the systolic murmurs. A systolic murmur may be ejection systolic murmur, mid systolic, late systolic or holosystolic or pan systolic murmur. So let's discuss ejection systolic murmur. The ejection systolic murmur begins with first heart sound and end in the mid systole. This ejection systolic murmur beginning with the first heart sound and going towards mid systole. The causes of ejection systolic murmur, ventricular causes, a small VSD and or a large VSD with pulmonary hypertension. They result in ejection systolic murmur. Number two, acute mitral regurgitation with non-compliant left atrium causes loud early systolic murmur. Number three, tricuspid regurgitation in narcotic addicts causes early systolic murmur that occurs due to endocarditis. Why narcotic addicts develop tricuspid regurgitation? Contaminated narcotic injection in a peripheral vein directly reaches to the tricuspid valve and damages it. Now mid-systolic murmur. Most benign functional murmurs are mid-systolic that originate from pulmonary outflow tract. In a young adult with a thin chest wall, a moderate mid-systolic murmur only in the pulmonary area is innocent murmur, but a louder murmur in the aortic area indicates congenital aortic stenosis. Echocardiography differentiates functional from pathological murmur. Aortic stenosis is the prototype of left-sided mid-systolic murmurs. Aortic systolic murmurs are common in acquired aortic stenosis. It also occurs in aortic dilatation in elderly, non stenotic thickening of the aortic valve leaflet. Aortic stenosis murmur is loudest in the second right intercostal space and radiates to the carotid arteries in the neck. But when aortic valve becomes immobile due to calcification, A2 becomes soft or disappears. Often crescendo, decrescendo in shape, they start shortly after the first heart sound, get louder and then diminishes as ejection declines. Murmur decreases in intensity and ends before the closure of the semilunar valve or before the second heart sound. What's Galavardin phenomena? Aortic stenotic murmur disappears from the right second intercostal space and appears at the apex beat area mimicking mitral regurgitation murmur. This is known as Galavardin phenomena. Other causes of the mid-systolic murmur are ventricular obstruction, valvular or subvalvular cause mid-systolic murmur. What's the difference between aortic stenotic murmur and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy murmur? In hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, mid-systolic murmur is maximum at the left lower external edge and apex beat area and very little radiates to the neck. So that's the difference. The hypertrophic cardiomyopathy murmur is at the left lower external edge and the apex beat area, whereas the aortic stenotic murmur is in the right second is intercostal space and that radiates to the neck whereas uh, cardiomyopathy murmur does not radiate to the neck. Where does mitral regurgitation murmur radiates? Mitral regurgitation murmur is loudest at the cardiac apex and left sternal border and radiates to the base of the heart or to the axilla and back. When posterior mitral leaflet is involved it radiates to the left sternal border and to the base of the heart and when anterior leaflet leaflet of the mitral valve is involved, then it radiates to the axilla and to the back. So when posterior mitral leaflet is involved, the murmur radiates to the left sternal border and to the base of the heart. And when anterior leaflet of the mitral valve is involved, then it radiates to the axilla and to the back. Now late systolic murmur. Late systolic murmurs are high pitch, apical 
and moderately loud murmurs. So why do they occur? They occur due to papillary muscle dysfunction. When does the papillary muscle dysfunction occur? It occurs after myocardial infarction ischemia, left ventricular dilatation, diffuse myocardial diseases and during the angina pectoris. Late systolic murmur occurring after these conditions due to papillary muscle dysfunction. The late systolic murmurs that occur after mid systolic click is due to mitral regurgitation due to mitral valve prolapse into the left atrium. Now, holosystolic or pansystolic murmur. This is the holosystolic or pansystolic murmur where the intensity of the sound remains same throughout the systole, starting from the first heart sound and ending ending at the second heart sound. Holosystolic or pansystolic murmur is a high pitch blowing murmur in which blood flows from high pressure chambers to a low pressure chambers throughout the systole. For example, between right and left ventricle, if there is a ventricular septal defect and between right atrium and right ventricle in tricuspid regurgitation and between left atrium and left ventricle in mitral regurgitation causes I already told mitral or tricuspid regurgitation and ventricular septal defect. What's memory suffle? An innocent systolic or continuous murmur that occurs over the breast area during late pregnancy and early postpartum period. What's a pre-systolic murmur? Pre-systolic murmur is a late diastolic murmur. This is the pre-systolic or late diastolic murmur. This is not a systolic murmur. It's a diastolic murmur and causes loud first heart sound.